And here we go. And here we go. And there it is. There it is. Let's get it going. A bracket. Yeah, you know, the uh, upper bracket of uh, this tournament. Top 13 teams in the country, technically speaking. Um, 13? 13 teams. I don't think so in this yes. tournament. Let's not say that. Yeah. There's a lot, I mean, less teams, but only eight make it to Sunday. Right. And it's going to be interesting to see what those eight teams are. Um, as we talked about in the B episode, a bracket ball this year, like I said, there's been real no sense of actual divisions. You know, Corona won up in New York. That was a tournament where it was open to anybody that wasn't in an illegal state to travel from. Um, Corona, too, there wasn't A and B, so you managed to get some North teams in there. And uh, even a DMV team, seven-point spread traveled up there and played in Corona, too. Um, down here, you had scorpions and aftermath as the two a teams running around um as mentioned they ended up facing off in the lmffl championship game but other than that not really much for the a bracket to talk about but that being said so much to talk about it going in however on terms of what can be in this tournament Let's take a look at what we got. There we go. These are the 13 teams coming into the tournament. You got Lions, who is, of course, the runner-up to last year's national championship, falling short to second gen and what perhaps was the greatest nine-man game I've seen just a fantastic game. Yeah, I was there. So close were the Lions to being national champions. Yeah. Um, it was great. That was a great game. Yeah. Um, you also have main event who, of course, semifinalists last year in the tournament um main event they played a little bit of, they didn't any tournament they played for nine man was corona two this year since nationals um a one and one effort is what they had there but a tough matchup against uh the rollers though they had a really tough matchup of rollers and what was an excellent game um punishers who uh they they had a pretty good year if you look at the franchise itself. I mean, Eric and company, they won Corona 1. They had some help along the way from some other guys in there. But, you know, that's going to always say Punishers. But even then, Corona 2, they were balling out before everything was postponed. They were number one overall. Most points scored, least points allowed. They, we talked about how dominant Nomads were in B. Punishers we're dominating in A leading up to that. Right. Lest we not forget. And of course, semifinalists last year, Nationals too, falling to second gen. In a game that I actually got uh, a chance to finally watch a couple of days ago when I was finishing my touches on the, net, on the World's documentary due out next Friday. Um, fantastic game that was between second gen and Punishers. Could have gone either way. Punishers had a great weekend last year. Um, SI Bulldogs, you know, uh, they've had a bit of an odd journey uh, coming into this. We look back at last year's Nationals. They got off to a good start. They beat on Back in Black. 
They beat on the Vikings. Um, then they ran in the main event. And for about three quarters and seven minutes, they were looking like they were cruising the victory. They had a two touchdown lead on main event. Uh, there was five minutes to go, but main event never gave up. They rallied back two touchdowns, 15 points, 29, 28. Next day, Strong Island was one and done on Sunday. Punishers with a shutdown, shutout, 17 nothing win. And, you know, Strong Island's played some nine-man since, but you look back at that stretch they had at Nationals last year, they were outscored 32 nothing in 53 minutes of play to end Nationals last year. And that's crazy when you think about the run that team had. Um, but you look at it, I mean, they got to the semifinals in uh, Corona 1. Corona 2, they were sitting at 1-1, one one, minus 13. Um, we'll see where they go. We'll see. Do they have Birdman back? That is the question. Right. Is Birdman returning? Is this his redemption shot? Because you remember, you know, Birdman hasn't had a touchdown in nine man since the five minute mark of the fourth quarter against main event last year in day two. And that's been nearly a year. But of course he's coming off injury as well and not many gains played, but it's crazy to think about that. We'll see how he comes out. If he is the quarterback, we don't know yet. We will see when they release the rosters in a couple of days. That's going to be interesting to watch out for. Because if he is, look out. Seven-point spread. You know, former national champions. They went up down there and won in 2017. Um, They went up to Corona 1, and they were putting in some work up there. Um, They've re- or Corona 2, sorry. Um, They've reinvented their offense a little bit. Um, we're looking forward to see what seven point brings to the table for this one. Um, they've always had that team who's in there. Curious to see how they do this time around at nationals. Yeah. You know, they uh, fell to the lions, I believe in the quarterfinals last year at nationals. Um, Gladiators. Last year, they uh, got to the quarterfinals as well. Fell to second gen. Um, had about a plus five on Corona Day Two on Corona Two um, in that first uh, weekend. Um, other than that, not much nine minutes have played. And you know, this Gladiators team is not. You know, they're going to have some new pieces, Ross. Some familiar faces to us here well, in the fourth state. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how. Uh, yeah, see how it all works out. Yeah, this is going to be different. I'm, this is one of the, this is going to be a team that's going to be hard to call early on. We'll see how they come out though. It's going to be really interesting. Um, aftermath, you know, we had a chance to cover aftermath and OMFFL this year as well as Clash of York, um, second place in OMFFL. Uh, did not perform very well at national last year, though. They did not make day three. Um, they were obliterated. Uh, Lions on Friday night, they mauled them 34 nothing. That game was just never close. Um, can they bounce back from a poor performance last year and do better this time around? As mentioned, you know, they've had a good year down here. They got second in OMFFL following the Scorpions in the championship. Second in Clash of York falling to Renegades. Um, but does that bode well going into this tournament? You think about it. Second place in what is a very B-heavy area. But, you know, I've heard Aftermath might be looking a little different come tournament time. We'll see. We'll see what they have this time around. I look forward to seeing it. Right. Scorpions, defending B national champions trying to pull a second gen here, um, trying to go B-A back-to-back. Yeah. Tough row for Greg Proctor, though. It took him 46 years to win B. Could it take him a year to win A? 
<sighs> Might be a while. It's, it's going to be a little. It's going to be interesting. You know, Greg. He he's played a ball before. Uh, he's not. He's not familiar. He's not a stranger to it. But it's going to be interesting to see how they do. Uh, Scorpions. You know, NFL champions. Um, they dominated that league very easily, very well. Um, they were challenged a little bit in the playoffs, but for the most part, they just had their way throughout the year. Um, only real slip up was the Renegades in the semifinals of Clash of York. You know, that interception Proctor threw. You were right there when he threw it. Yeah. That costly pick at the end of that game. Good old yeah. Looking forward to seeing how the Scorpions come out here in this tournament. Uh, 148 Outlaws. Um, I haven't had a chance to really see much into them. Um, I do. I did watch uh, their game against the Demons, I believe, from the Rhode Island Flag Bowl last year when I was editing episode one of the documentary on Worlds. Um, really looking forward to seeing how they do transition to A. Um, they've been around for a long while from what I was reading the other day. I think someone told me they've been around since the 80s. Um don't quote me 100 percent on that. This is what I was I saw reading the comments. Sure um, wow. Yeah, so they definitely have like the long term talent and pedigree to do, definitely do well going into this tournament. Uh, looking forward to seeing what they got. Takeover as well. They were balling at Corona too. Um, they annihilated the Lions, I do believe, in one of their games they faced off at um, in that tournament. We're looking forward to seeing what they got coming into this one. Um. Alliance as well. I can't really. I don't really got much comments on Alliance. Some a team I haven't really seen much of yet. So looking forward to seeing what they got. High Rollers, you know Matt Bailey and company. They're going to have a lot going for them. They got a lot of talent. They got a lot of ballers. They were second place in the Corona One tournament, and they were doing pretty well in uh, Corona Two before it was called. So they got a really strong case for being one of the top five teams entering this one. Um, and of course you got Texas prime. They're from Texas. Um, not sure what they're going to have, but you know, a lot of talent comes from that state, man. It's Texas. There's football players all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how they play the nine man game, especially on the a circuit. I mean, this is the best of the best. So right. yeah. Really looking forward to seeing just how this all goes. So those are the 13 teams. I want to keep this up, actually. I thought about taking it down, but you don't need to see my face that much. Um, so the 13, if I were to take a five and rank them based on what little of a year that they've really had to play up there for the most part, you know, you look at the teams in this, um, aftermath and scorpions, they've had the most playing time this year in terms of nine man coming into this. But when you look at the body of work, it's not enough in my opinion for either of them to crack the top five. Don't get me wrong. You know, they could have something. Mm. Scorpions, you know, they could be a sleeper. Aftermath, you know, maybe they'll find something different. Maybe something goes better for them this year. But I don't see it. They've had the most games played, but I don't think they've had enough to make a strong case mm. to get in there. I think if you were to take a look at overall talent and where teams stand and how some of the results went because this was even harder to do than the uh, B one. You know, this was even more harder to do than B was. Um, but if I were to take a look at it and evaluate it, I'd have to say of the teams who just missed the cut, um, Lions would be Lions and Strong Island were close to me in the same in that regard. Like I had them kind of, I had them both kind of sitting at a tie for fifth. 
it's a, it's close. You know, Lions, they are the runner up to last year's national championship. We know they're going to be ready. Um, we saw, and the only results we really have for them since then was Corona 2, where they went 0 and 2 on that weekend. But, you know, we don't know what they had coming for day two. We don't know what could have been. Um, but from what we've seen so far, I would say, like, they're close. Uh, strong Island, like we said, the potential's there. We saw what Birdman could do in that summer of 2019 when he had them in three consecutive championship games in less than a two-month span, actually. But it's tough. It really is. And the stream just kicked off or something. I don't know. Now, there it is. We're back. Um, it's just my phone. I wasn't sure if it was alive or not. Hmm. But I'd say it's close in that position based on what has <laughs> happened so far leading up to this. Right. Yeah. Like I said, we don't have much of body to work to go off of. But they're definitely going to have a shot up there. Um, Strong Island has said, you know, they can get back into form. I'd say fourth coming in. Based on what we've seen, you know, main event, they're going to have everybody there. They're going to be locked and loaded. Um, I feel like they definitely have what it takes. They were close to beating Lions last year in that semifinal game. You know, that controversial field goal at the end, that block, the penalty, everything else, that really killed them in that game. Um, you know, but they haven't really had a chance to play nine-man much this year. Um, they did, they have been playing other styles though. They've been playing eight man. They've been playing five man. They've been traveling. They've been playing seven man, the different variations, albeit different rosters. But I feel like coming into this, they have what it takes, but based on what we've seen so far coming in just a little bit around fourth, but like I said, it's tough. It's a competitive league. It's a very competitive league. This is the top level of nine man for a reason. Um, and it's in a season where, for the most part, everybody on here has played less than four games for the most part. Um, like I said, it's all pure speculation, just a starting point to get to an eventual end point. Uh, number three, takeover. You know, they were playing pretty well up in uh, Corona 2. They've been playing pretty well up there for the most part of the North all year. Um I like what they got coming in. They got a lot of potential. Um, I think they definitely have what it takes, but we'll see how it goes. Um, number two, I'm going to have to go with Rollers. You know, they were runner up in Corona one. They definitely put on a show for the most part of Corona two. We don't know what could have happened on month two with that tournament. Um, they're going to have Bailey on there playing quarterback. Like, it's hard to really sell them short coming into this. They definitely have momentum coming in. We'll see how far it carries them. Can they get to Sunday? We'll see. And number one, based on body of work, um, you know, Punishers, you can say what you want about the championship they had at Corona 1, but they were showing in Corona 2 that they were just playing on the same level just as good. We don't know where it could have ended at. We don't. They could have gone one and done. They could have won it all. But if I were to go based on that, what we've seen, and what's been a very, very – it's like college football right now. And I feel like they've probably only gotten better since then. Yeah, and they showed that they could definitely compete last year. Like, that Punisher's team was making a big statement at Nationals last year, They especially after they beat Strong Island. But, you know, they fell short to a lightning rod in second gen. We'll see where it goes, though. We'll see how everybody performs. Uh, we're going to have more coverage of it over the next couple of weeks. Tune in next Wednesday night when we do a bracket media night. Till then, I'm Joey Blaze. We'll see you next week and the next few weeks for more Nationals coverage.